Okay, the inverse function property between logarithmic functions and exponential functions. Logarithmic and exponential functions are inverses of one another. So one thing you may recall, if you compose two functions that are inverses together, what ends up happening is whatever value you plug in, it goes through one function and then its inverse replaces it, returns it wherever it started. So when you compose two functions that are inverses together, whatever you substitute in also comes back out. Uh, it's kind of like it runs through a function and its inverse and kind of places it back wherever it started. And this works both directions, whether you put the F inverse on the outside with F on the inside or how I wrote it. So log base A of A to an exponent, what ends up happening is if you have the log on the outside, but the base is the exact same as the exponential part that's on the inside, you're going to get this really nice canceling out and you're just gonna be left with whatever that exponent is. If you did this in the other order, where if you have a logarithm up in the exponent with a base for the exponential part here being the exact same, you're also gonna get that nice canceling out and whatever's being plugged in to the inner function is gonna be output as well. So let's take a look. Um, let's say 10 raised to the common log of three power. So on this, it's important to know common log means log base 10 automatically just by definition of common log. So whenever you don't see a base, it's automatically base 10. So this kind of fits into the bottom version where we have 10 as a base raised to an exponent. And then we have log base 10 up in the exponent. So what's gonna happen here is you get this nice canceling out and this is just gonna equal three. Um, next, let's take a look at this natural log of e to the fourth power. So a little review over natural log means log base e by definition of natural logarithm. So natural log, we've replaced that with log base e. Now it's a little bit easier to see that we have log with a base of e, and then e raised to a power on the inside here. This fits into the same format as the top version of the inverse function property. So we're gonna get that nice canceling out and just gonna be left with four on that one. Now log base two of eight, it's a little bit more difficult that <clears throat> it doesn't stand out from the very beginning. And this is not the only way you can go through this problem. But one way to do this is go with the smaller of these integers. We already see a two for our base. So let's work on rewriting the eight as two to a power. So two to the second is four. Four times two is eight. So two to the third power is equivalent to eight. Now this has lined itself up to fit into this format at the top, log base two, and then two to a power. We're gonna get some nice canceling out with this inverse function property. This is just gonna equal three. Similarly, on the bottom one here, I would try to rewrite this if I was evaluating it with seven as our common base. So that's currently seven to the first power, but it's in the denominator. We need to move that up to the numerator. So let's use one of our exponent rules that says we can move seven to the first power up to the numerator as long as we make the exponent negative. Now this fits into the inverse function property log base seven, just like the top version here, of seven to a power. So nice canceling out, you're left with the exponent negative one. One last one here, you may say, oh, this one looks different. We have that nine hanging out in front, but that nine out in front is being multiplied. So that's important to note, this is nine multiplied by log base three of three. Well, those threes are kind of standing out to me that we have log base three and then three on the inside that kind of looks like the top version of our inverse function property. What we need to know though is that three on the inside, does it have an exponent attached to it? Well, sure enough it does. We don't usually write it, but it's three raised to the first power on the inside. So what we could do is we could bring along the nine multiplied by three log base three of three to the first power, all of that's gonna simplify down and simply be one. You're left with the exponent. Nine times one is gonna equal nine. So I hope this helps out in understanding the inverse function property a little bit better. Now, some of these problems you may have elected to set them equal to a dummy variable, switch over to exponential form, get the same base on both sides and use the one to one function. Uh, function property for exponential functions, or you could use this inverse function property will end up in the exact same solution. 
either way you go about it. So I hope this helps out. Good luck on logarithmic and exponential functions.